Hi, this is Francisco Pulgar Viral with FKI Quality and today I would like to present one more method for the calculation of process capability. As you recall, the capability of a process is the ability of the process to uh, meet the requirements of its customers or the business. Now, we uh, before have uh, discussed the fact that the um, uh, percentage of acceptable product is already a measure of capability, so percentage works or yield, but in addition to that also we have the sigma um, metric. Now what happens when there is more than one important quality characteristics of a product or a service? In that case the sigma method uh, doesn't work and we need to apply what we're going to present in here today which is the DPMO method. DPMO stands for defects per million opportunities. Now um, Let's say, let's again give us uh, an example uh, related to, to pizza delivery, which is uh, easy to picture. So let's say that there are two different uh, metrics that we are really interested in uh, uh, measuring when you're looking, let's say, at an area where you have a number of uh, pizza stores. So if we're looking at two metrics which are important for us, those ones are going to be on one hand the timeliness of the delivery of the pizzas, but also as more and more uh, customers order pizza with uh, soda or with uh, wings or breadsticks or whatever, the order becomes more complex. And so the completeness of the order is going to be another one of our characteristics. So let's talk about these two. On one hand, therefore, we're going to have timeliness. And this we will call a uh, critical to quality one metric. And then the other one is going to be uh, completeness. And this will be critical to quality two metric. So in the language of the formula, what we're talking about here is the fact that there are two opportunities for quality. So the number of opportunities or letter O is going to be equal to number two. Now let's say that we're trying to set a baseline. How is our area that, let's say we're managing an area of multiple um, pizza shops and uh, pizza branches, and we want to know how we're doing. Let's say we're gonna therefore conduct a quality study over 5,000 deliveries in the next couple of weeks. Those uh, 5,000 deliveries are going to be what we're gonna call the number of units, again, in the formula. So now let's say that we have done this analysis and these are the numbers that we got. Let's say that the number of late deliveries, which would be defect type 1, we're going to make it to be equal to 50. And the number of incomplete deliveries, which would be defect type 2, is one that we choose to say, let's say, 128. These are just numbers that would have come from the uh, survey that we have conducted or the baselining exercise that we are conducting. So with this number of def uh, defects measured, what is what we're going to call the DPMO of this whole operation and therefore what's the sigma and what is the yield? So the formula goes like this. In order to calculate DPMO, we're always going to multiply whatever fraction, what, what we're interested in here is to say these two numbers which they represent um, defects or, or instance of failure compared to the total possible number of failures that we may have, how, how, what type of ratio do we get? And then, because we're working on per million um, metric, we're going to multiply this by a million. So in the formula, we actually begin just by saying, all right, so we're going to have one million times this ratio that I was just discussing, which is going to be the sum of the two errors or the two defect counts. So 50 plus 128, and then the total possible number of defects that we could have in the worst possible situation would be really that all of the deliveries, the 5,000 deliveries, are uh, defective in two ways. That is, all 5,000 deliveries are at the same time late and also incomplete for a total grand total of 10,000 maximum number of defects. So that would be if we were to multiply the 5,000 deliveries 
times two defects for each one. When you do the arithmetic of this, you're going to find that, well, this number is 10,000, uh, which is four zeros. Uh, you end up here with uh, two zeros, so that's 100, plus the 178. You're going to end up with a DPMO equal to uh, 17800. So this is the level of quality at which we found ourselves. Now, when you go to the sigma table, you will find from the table that we are operating at a sigma level equal to 2.1. And this is going to now represent a yield equal to 98.21%. And so this is the way in which the, the formula works. And this is the way in which we can calculate the performance of a process uh, using the DPMO method. What we're going to be calculating next will be uh, instances, let's say, uh, where you can use a formula in a slightly different way, as in maybe setting a certain target for maximum number of defectives and also maybe setting a target for <coughs> a desired level of sigma. From the initial situation, we could give ourselves the following problem, the following exercise. Would it be possible to achieve a yield of 99%, let's say, but by only reducing the number of incomplete orders? So that's what we want to know. Is 99% possible? But the, the, the constraint that we're giving ourselves is that we're not going to try to change the timeliness or the speed of delivery. Let's just uh, work on the completeness. So can we reduce the number of incomplete orders in order to get to this? Well, let's take a look at the, how the calculation would go. 99% yield means that the defective, the percent defective is going to be 1%. Now, 1% expressed in parts per million is the same as saying that what we want is to want to have a DPMO equal to 10,000. And so if we uh, enter these numbers into the equation, this would be equivalent of saying that 10,000 has to be equal to, now I'm just going to write 1 million for, for 1 million, uh, times the original number of late deliveries that we had, which was 50, plus a target number for incomplete deliveries, divided by the same number that we had before, which was 5,000 deliveries, times 2. So this is really the equation now. And so what we have is that just by doing the, the same type of calculations, we're going to find that as you uh, um, uh, multiply these numbers and uh, eliminate zeros and all of this, what you're going to get is that 100 is equal to 50 plus the number of incomplete orders. And then just with simple arithmetic, you will find that the number of incomplete orders, therefore, is going to be this and so if the question had been what is the reduction that we need to have in the number of incomplete orders remembering that we started with 128 right so the initial value was 128 minus the this uh, let's say reduction in order to get us to 50 then that would mean really the reduction is going to have to be equal to 128 minus 50, or a value of um, 78. So this would be sort of like uh, what the number that you would then put in the um, scope or in the, ch in, in the charter or the objective of a project that says, if what we really want to do is to get to 99%. Is it possible, first of all? Yes, it is possible, because the number of incomplete deliveries is not a negative number, but positive. We need to get to 50. But because we started with 128, that means we need to reduce this by 78. And so that can give us an intermediate target in order to get to a higher level of performance. Yet another type of problem that we may find here is that um, maybe uh, what we need to do is we've given ourselves a certain uh, sigma target value. 
And so let's say that the organization wants us to operate not at the 2.1 sigma, but 2.5 sigma. What would be the meaning of this? Well, if the, if the target is um, a sigma of 2.5, right, then the first thing that we need to do is to say, well, what does this correspond to in DPMO? Because we, that's, that's how we need to measure things. And so the DPMO is going to be from the table again, 6,210. So now, one more time, we uh, use this as the end result, and then we back into what is the number of um, uh, incomplete deliveries that we, uh, ma that we can afford, uh, always saying that we're not going to touch, we're not going to work on trying to make our operation faster so that we don't run into any unnecessary risk. So D1 is going to stay the same, D2 becomes the unknown. So what we have is that 6,210, which is the DPMO, is going to be equal to 1 million times the number of um, late deliveries, which would stay the same if we were to do exactly the same type of analysis, plus D2, which is the number of incomplete deliveries, divided by 5,000 times 2 again. So one more time, we have here that this is 10,000, four zeros go, this is 100, 100 going, over here goes uh, uh, dividing, so we find that 62.10 is equal to 50 plus D2. Now, clearly we cannot have a number of defects with a, a fraction, and we need to be conservative so that we stay within the, the 2.5 sigma target. Therefore, really what we're saying is that 62 minus 50 has to be equal to the number of defects that we can afford to have, and this would be equal to 12. So 12 is the maximum number of incomplete orders that we may have if our target is to reach um, a capability value of 2.5 sigma. And so that would then become a target, again, that to be included in the description of our project and a goal to uh, work towards. This is an overview of the DPMO method and the various ways in which we can use the equation that allows us to calculate DPMO and with it sigma and yield. Thank you for your time.